Hi, my name is Rami Tamimi. If you've ever wanted to be able to measure elevation accurately and without using any equipment that requires batteries, this is the differential level. Leveling is a very basic method that allows you to take the differences of the elevations between several points. All it consists of is starting out at a base point known as the benchmark. This benchmark has a known elevation that we begin all of our measurements from. This benchmark is usually a known location that either you, an older surveyor, or some government municipality set and provided record information that everyone must follow. For the purposes of this experiment, I'm going to be using a point that is on the front side of my house. We'll be using this manhole to begin our level loop. We have a known elevation on it, and it's our benchmark for the project. So what exactly is leveling, and what kind of measurements are we taking? With leveling, we're starting at a benchmark that has a known elevation. Whoever is operating the instrument will hold the instrument at a distance between the benchmark and the point they want to observe. Another person will then hold a rod that has numbers on it. These numbers are also subdivided on the rod. The person holding the rod will first hold the benchmark. Once holding the benchmark, the instrument operator can then see the difference between the ground elevation and the line of sight of the instrument. This number is then added to the elevation of the benchmark, giving us the instrument height. Now that we know what our elevation is based off the benchmark of the line of sight of the instrument, we're then able to turn the angle to another point. The second point is the foresight. The number that we read from this is the difference between our line of sight and where the elevation of that point is. Therefore, we subtract it from our instrument height, giving us a new elevation on a new point. If we're trying to do this on several points, then we're going to be doing multiple foresights. This could all be from the same setup if you're able to see all of the points from where you're set up. However, more times than not, you're going to want to see points that you can't visibly see at the setup that you're at. So what do you do? You then have to take a turn point. This turn point can be a feature on the ground or a physical disc that's dropped onto the ground. You then take a foresight reading on that and calculate the elevation. After that, you pick up your equipment, you go to the new setup, and then you back sight this last point and create a new setup and start to recollect data. After you finish collecting all your foresight readings, you're going to want to go back to the original benchmark and close the loop. You should find that the elevation is relatively close to the initial recorded elevation. In the office, we will then calculate the error in our closure and redistribute the error so that our elevations are adjusted. This might seem confusing, so we're going to do it together right now. Now the first thing you need to do when you first figure out where you're going to be set up, lay the legs down and step on them so that they're embedded into the earth. Then what you're going to want to do is level out the level so that it's completely flat with the horizon. You don't want your level to be tilting up or tilting down in any way, shape or form. The way that this is done is using these three knobs. There's one here and there's one in the back here. These two are used to tilt the level left and right. The front knob here is used to then tilt the instrument forward and back. The way you can tell if an instrument is leveled is by seeing this little bubble inside of the glass. The way that you can see this bubble is by looking into the little mirror. Now when I rotate left and right, I should be able to adjust the bubble to get into the middle. And then I'll bring it down just a little bit. Perfect. Now you're going to have somebody holding this rod. This rod is called a Philadelphia rod. Let's open it up for you guys. This rod is tall. It's, this one I think is 15 feet. I've only got about eight feet of it opened because I don't think I'm gonna need to, to use anything more than that. What you see here are red numbers and black numbers. The red numbers are entire feet that are being measured from the bottom of the rod. This is where our elevation is being measured from and that's why it's zero on the bottom. When reading this rod, you're probably gonna fall somewhere here in the middle. These are feet as well. You're not gonna be able to see that five or that four down there because this might be all you can see in your viewfinder. So knowing that this is four feet, you can then try to figure out the tenths and the hundredths. So we know that we're at four feet. If we're taking a reading and it comes up right at the top of this line, then we know that our reading is 4.50. However, if the reading comes in right here at the bottom of the next top line, then our reading is 4.51, 4.52, 4.53, 4.54, 4.55. As you see, 
the five is a little bit longer. That's a good indication that you're halfway. 4.56, 4.57, 4.58, 4.59. The bottom line of the number is a 0 0.09, 4.59, 4.60. If you get a reading right here in the middle and it's hard to judge whether it's up here or down here, make the assumption that it's lower. Always make the assumption that it's lower. That's it. That's all you have to do to read this rod. Something to keep in mind of when you're holding this rod. You want to make sure you're holding it straight. Not like this, not like this, not like this, and not like this. You want to hold it as straight as possible so that the person sighting you can see the true difference in elevation between where they're at and where you are. In order to do this properly, all you want to do is swing this back and forth ever so gently. In doing that, the person reading the rod is going to see a variation in numbers. They're going to take the lowest reading that they can see. The lowest reading indicates that the rod is exactly plumb and where it needs to be, rather than being too forward or too back. By doing it slightly back and forth, barely touching the rod, you're allowing the reader to see if there's any type of error. On their end, they might not see anything. However, if it's a windy day or you just don't have the ability to hold this thing straight, this will help you do that. Now you're gonna see a few knobs on this and they're not very difficult to work with. This right here, which is complemented by another one on this side, are just your turning knobs. Th these will do a fine turn, you know, something a lot more precise than your fingers can do. But as you can see, while I do this, it's slowly turning the instrument. All right, that's enough. The next knob you're gonna be interested in is this one. This is the focusing knob. So when you're sighting something and it looks blurry, this will allow you to focus in and out. The final knob that you might not realize is on here is this one. This right here is used to fine tune your crosshairs so that you can accurately see where the center of your scope is. This will all make sense once we take a reading. Let's take a reading on our benchmark and begin our leveling project. It looks like a four up there. Okay, so we are at three feet and the crosshairs are coming in at eight point, looks like a laying right on the three line right there. So that's gonna be 3.83. That is our back sight reading on the benchmark. All right, now we're gonna take our rod and move it to another point so that we can go to our site. So now we're going to be having a turn point right over here. It's on the bottom of this gate. I'm going to be holding the rod right here, and that's where we're going to take our turn. Usually there should be a point here that we're taking a turn on, but for the sake of this experiment, I'm just going to use the same location. All right, and it looks like we're reading 4.5. Ooh, it's Mm. I'm going to go ahead and round that one down to 4.50. Remember, if you're coming in between two numbers, always round down. Chances are the rod is being held just slightly off center and you're better off reading the lower number. All right, we're going to go ahead and pick up and go down to the next setup. This should do right here. Go ahead and step on the legs. Go ahead and level this thing. That looks pretty good. It's also a good idea that after you've leveled to tap the top, just to kind of make sure that everything is stable. All right, now that we have our new setup here, we're gonna back sight the last point that we just shot and that's going to be our new reference benchmark for this setup. Here we go. All right, and when I look into this, I'm seeing a 3.7. It looks like that's right on the three line, so 3.73. All right, now we can start shooting in some points that we have here on our site. You remember from the last lab, we had three points that we set, orange, blue, and green. Well, we're going to be taking the elevations of those points using this level. Let's start with orange. All right, and it looks like we are getting 5.9, oh, 5.97. It's right between that eight and seven. So I'm gonna go down so 
so 5.97. All right, next, let's measure blue. And it looks like here we're getting 3.19. See how easy that one was? 3.19. And now the last point we need to measure is point green. Come on, let's go. Man, he's slow. He's really slow. Yeah, I think we should fire him, honestly. I mean, he's just, just, just a mess. All right, you good? All right, here we go. And it looks like we're getting a reading of 5.32, 5.32. Good. All right, now that we're done collecting the data here in the field, we need to go back to our benchmark. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn back to that point at the gate. I'm gonna move the instrument over to where we were before, and then I'm gonna take another reading on the manhole to verify our elevation. All right, good. In the next video, we'll go over how we can calculate the elevations of all of these points, as well as finding the error in our measurements so that we can distribute the error and adjust our elevations. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. And with that, see you next time.